Hey, Jordan here from HardcoreMusicStudio.com. I wanted to do a short video here comparing manual slip editing to using Beat Detective and Pro Tools to edit the drums. When I read a lot of the audio forums and talk to engineers, especially within the kind of heavier music circles, it seems like manual slip editing, which is basically just chopping and snapping to the grid every single hit by hand for a whole song is kind of the norm and that's not how I edit drums and I don't think it's the best way to edit drums because it just takes so long it's very tiring and time consuming but a lot of people just dismiss tools like Beat Detective because it might not work perfectly all the time and so they just don't even take the time to really get used to it and uh, figure it out and so they end up you know accepting the fact that they have to spend an hour, even two hours uh, editing drums for a song, which is just not the case. So, so I'm gonna do a comparison here and edit just a small section of drums and see how long it takes to edit them manually versus using Beat Detective. So I'm gonna work on just this little section here. It's eight bars worth. Let's take a listen. Just going to trim at the start of this region just to make it nice and tidy for us here okay so this is the section i'm going to work on so let's start with the manual slip editing so there might be a bunch of kind of slightly different approaches to manual slip editing but essentially um, i've got tab to transient on here and i'm just going to tab to every single drum hit and literally just move it to the grid like this so okay let me back up i'm going to start a timer on my phone I know you can't see, down, see that on the screen, but I'll start it now, and I'll probably end up just speeding this video up to, uh, to make it not be so boring, but we'll see how long it takes to get through this section. Alright, so that's the end of the section there. Let's listen. So everything's quantized there, but nothing is crossfaded. So I then have to go through and do all this or do some sort of manual fading or batch fading. Uh, and Pro Tools, which also would require me pulling back these regions manually, which I guess I should have done as I was going here. Um, so I would just go through, pull back, and then do batch fade. And my timer's at about three minutes right now, so it took three minutes just to quantize those, and let's say it maybe take another one to two minutes uh, to do all the fades and stuff. So, so 10 seconds worth of audio here, let's say it was about maybe four minutes. I think it would take a little longer with all the fades, but let's say four minutes just to... Uh, give it a little bit of an extra head start here. So, okay, so now I'm going to show you how I would do it with Beat Detective, and I'll, I will not explain what I'm doing here just so that I can show you how much faster it is. All right, so I'll start the timer now.
All right, and that's quantized. So we're under two minutes now. So it's uh, about 1.45 when I finish quantizing that. I should go through quickly and just fix some of the symbol hits in between here that we didn't catch with Beat Detective. All right, so that was just another few seconds, and then all that's left is just to do the Beat Detective smoothing, crossfading. All right, so we got some artifacts of just on uh, kind of some bad, badly played sections here, but we can fix that with stuff like that, pulling back the regions on the snare, for example, to just kind of get rid of that flammy kind of sound um, due to the edits here. And that's really it. So that was two to three minutes versus about four to five minutes. So I'd say it's a, almost half the time to do it with Beat Detective. Uh, and the key I hope you saw is that I'm working in smaller sections. So I didn't just try to select the whole thing and quantize it because that probably wouldn't have worked. Um, but rather I was kind of nudging bigger sections around to get it close to the grid, then uh, conforming it, quantizing it with Beat Detective. And then thanks to the trigger pad here and then also the edit smoothing where it's creating 10 millisecond fades and filling the gaps, we've got a nice little buffer here at the start of each transient so we know that we're not going to lose any of our hits. Like we sometimes did with Tap to Transient, I don't know if you heard on the first example of slip editing, kind of some of the transients like this for example, I'd tap to the transient but for some reason it's cutting right there but a little after the transient starts. With manually going through it, I would have to, you know, just by eye and by hand move that cut back and fix it and everything but with beat detective we've got a nice little trigger pad here our fade is here everything is nice and natural sounding so if you're stuck on slip editing manually by hand it takes you forever to go through a drum track i know that used to be the case for me too i used to just manually chop and move everything before i really figured out how to use Beat Detective properly and effectively, and it's just cut my editing time in half, saved me lots of time and tons of frustration as well. Uh, I do have another video that goes a lot more in depth on uh, my actual process for using Beat Detective, and then in my course, Hardcore Editing, I go in, de in detail even more, showing you the, the whole drum editing process from something simple to something very uh, complex and badly played, and show you how I use different approaches and different techniques, and actually combine Beat Detective with some manual editing to get the results I need. So the link to that other Beat Detective tutorial should pop up on the screen here. Check that out if you want to spend some more time learning about my workflow for this. And thanks for watching.